Hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Jeff Huber, Contributing Editor at Chemical and Engineering News, and I will be moderating today's event. This webinar is titled Engineering Education and Research During COVID-19, How to Impart Practical Knowledge Using Digital Tools, and is being sponsored by Elsevier. Senian works with sponsors to identify topics of interest and value to Senian's audience and consistent with Senian's mission to provide news and analysis of the chemistry enterprise in a timely, accurate, and balanced fashion. During the webinar, you can adjust the size of the slides on your screen by grabbing the lower right corner with your mouse. If you need technical assistance, please look at the Help widget at the bottom of the screen or type your query into the Q&A box. If you are disconnected during the webcast, please log in again according to the instructions you received earlier. You are encouraged to contribute to the success of this webinar by asking questions at any time during the presentation through the Q&A box on your screen. The questions will be answered at the end of the presentation, and as your moderator, I will be posing as many as time permits. Please note that CNN does not endorse any company products or services that may be mentioned in the webinars, and that each webinar will be archived at CNN online after the live webcast. The presentation today is being sponsored by Elsevier. Elsevier is a leader in information and analytics for customers across the global research and health ecosystems. And during the presentation, we will hear from Dr. Chris Cogswell. Dr. Cogswell is a current customer consultant for engineering products at Elsevier, serving corporate customers in the United States. He received his Bachelor of Science degree from the University of New Hampshire in both chemical engineering and philosophy and a PhD in chemical engineering from Northeastern University. And with that, I will now hand things over to Dr. Cogswell. So my name is Chris Cogswell. Thank you all so much for attending here today. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about novel and engineering village for engineering education, um, specifically in light of the challenges that uh, people are facing now with the COVID, uh, COVID issues going on. Okay. So we're going to start off today by talking about some of the skills needed for engineering graduates for industrial careers, um, things that really we've heard from our uh, consulting uh, partners and our uh, customers, frankly. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how to develop those skills using digital tools, specifically focusing on technical writing, project-based learning, independent research, and then talking about some of the features for engineering education, specifically in the tools Novel and Engineering Village. Um, and then finally, some content that we think will be useful for engineering education and we hope will be useful for all of you on the call. All right, so first, the skills needed for engineering graduates for their industrial careers. One of the main things we hear from both professors and also customers out there um, in the corporate world is that engineering is no longer the sort of siloed thing that it once was. Modern engineering is increasingly interdisciplinary and really requires specialized knowledge from many fields. So a student who's leaving a department of electrical engineering or aerospace engineering or chemical engineering, they might get to a company um, and take another year or even more to train up in the skills they need. Um, and part of that is because these engineers need to be very well rounded. They have to have a familiarity of a wide set of topics and practical knowledge that can only really come from project-based learning. So if you think about it, um, if you're going to become a mechanical engineer at a place that produces auto parts, you not only need to know the sort of structural and mechanical issues that go into the creation of that material, but you also need to know things like process engineering, automation engineering, um, likely uh, computer science, some electrical engineering, perhaps material science, um, and all kinds of other skills that go into that one role that you're taking on. And one thing we hear consistently is that new hires are really often lacking in critical skills other than those kind of solid engineering things, right? So um, not only are there too few engineering graduates, but those who do graduate go to industry and aren't necessarily fully prepared for their career. And so some of the things that we hear, and I know I especially have heard this from my clients in um, the North American corporate segments, are skills like uh, public speaking, or design and ideation of experiments or projects, um, leadership, 
right? Critical thinking and problem solving skills, communication and uh, writing proficiency, especially all of these are skills that your students, while they're getting their engineering education at your university, um, also need to try and develop these other skills so that they can be really effective once they make their way out there into the industrial sector. And so we're going to be talking about Novel and Engineering Village as tools which we hope will allow you and allow your students to get, um, get those skills up to speed that they need to get into. So, okay, Novel and Engineering Village provide coverage of a breadth of engineering topics. So things that are specific, right, stuff like chemistry engineering, you know, chemical engineering or electrical engineering, but also more than just those simple subjects but a broader set of things, right? Six Sigma certification, managing change at an industrial site, um, technical writing and being an effective writer, management and those sorts of skills. Novel is a uh, tool which provides trusted, accessible, and relevant engineering answers and insights with content from over 150 plus different partners. So what Novel actually is, is it's full text content um, which you can utilize, providing things like material data, um, information on uh, the really fundamental work that goes on in uh, different research areas and fields, and again, provides you with full text content. Engineering Village, on the other hand, is a specialized abstracting and indexing database, which covers all engineering subjects through the world's leading engineering content, uh, with 12 different databases, including Compendex, uh, InSpec, Geobase, and GeoRef, U.S., uh, European Union and Worldwide Patents, NTIS, Encompass, Paper Chem, CBNB, and Chemica. So if we think about where these two tools sit on the spectrum of work that your students are doing, Novel is going to be more applied engineering, right? learning how to do things, getting up to speed on subjects, and then actually applying that work to the actual uh, real-world problems they're going to solve as engineers. And Engineering Village gives them a set of tools which allows them to analyze and learn from the engineering literature, right? So actually how, what research is going on, um, what is hoping to come down the pipeline soon for the engineering world, those sorts of questions. And really these two tools will allow your students to prepare themselves for a successful career. Um, Novel and Engineering Village are used by some of the most innovative companies and research institutions worldwide. So Engineering Village, for example, is used by 95% of the top 20 U.S. engineering graduate schools and 92% of top global engineering and technology schools. Novel is used by 250 plus universities and research institutions worldwide. And many of the companies that your students hope to be working for after they graduate or the graduate schools that they hope to be going to um, are already going to have access to Novel and Engineering Village and use them as part of their normal workflow, right? Um, now, this is just a sampling of some of the uh, companies and ex, uh, academic institutions that we work with. Uh, however, you know, name a chemical company, name an engineering company, name a academic institution. It is likely that they have to, um, it's likely that they will have access to these tools. Now, not only do engineers from a different uh, or from a large set of institutions utilize these tools, but it's also engineers in all areas of expertise that use these tools for their multidisciplinary content. So in engineering, for example, uh, or an engineering village, for example, the areas of expertise of our, uh, of our users go all the way from mechanical engineering, computer science, electrical, to nuclear, aerospace, agricultural, architectural, biomedical, um, but also, frankly, other people that are working at these companies as well. So what I mean by other there are things like uh, media and entertainment, right? security systems, um, healthcare, defining and determining customer bases or um, looking for people that maybe you want to recruit. There's a lot of use for this tool outside of just the engineering workflow. However, today, obviously, we are focusing on the engineering workflow itself. Novel, of course, is also used by various industry sectors. Um, according to uh, recent surveys that we actually asked people who use Novel, um, we asked them what do they use Novel for, what are the 
business outcomes and tasks that they're able to achieve with Novel. And you can see here that from across the spectrum of customers, the biggest uh, biggest thing that they were able to do was improve their overall engineering outcomes, get up to speed on how to do things and improve operational excellence, and uh, in some areas also improve safety or regulatory compliance. So it is a tool which can be used, again, for those sorts of applied engineering tasks that are going to be going on every day at institutions, um, which maybe your students don't have a lot of visibility to currently from the classroom. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of sort of what Novel and an Engineering Village are and what they can do, um, I want to talk a little bit of how to use these digital tools to develop the skills that our uh, customers and our clients say engineering graduates require when they get to their industry. So again, I talked a little bit about how novel and engineering could be used, right? Where, where, what stage of the process of engineering do they fit in at? And if we think about the stages of an engineering education, right, we can say that the first couple of years, maybe year one and two, are really foundational years, right? Students are learning engineering fundamentals. They're going to be doing things like getting up to speed on mathematics, um, learning things like, uh, you know, chemistry and physics and biology, depending on the field that they're going into, and maybe doing one or two kind of initial stage engineering courses, but really not getting into um, the sort of nitty gritty stuff that defines one engineering discipline versus another. In those third and fourth and fifth years, that's where they're doing domain specific courses, right? So they're going to be learning things like um, the specifics to how to do, uh, you know, for example, from my own background in chemical engineering, in those third, fourth, or even fifth years, students are moving away from just simple, you know, learning physical chemistry and organic chemistry and physics to learning um, process control and chemical kinetics and scale-up methodologies, right? They're taking unit operations laboratory courses. They're really getting deep into um, the kind of really, the real stuff, the real meat of the work they're going to be doing as engineers. And then, of course, post-undergraduate, when they go into research work, either as a master's or a doctorate or, you know, what have you, um, that's where they're going to be doing research work, right? They're going to be extending their knowledge from the classroom into new things. Now, in my mind, in those foundational years up to those domain-specific courses, that is where tools like Novel can be very valuable. Because Novel, again, is going to be giving students access to full-text content uh, that is reference works from the world of engineering disciplines. So if you're doing a class, say, on nuclear engineering, and your students are interested maybe in a light water reactor, you haven't covered that topic yet in their courses, they can go to Novel, search for light water reactors, and get um, dozens of books, um, conference proceedings, other pieces of information relevant to those light water reactors. Right? They can really learn about what they're doing. Um, if they're doing things like, say, Bernoulli's equation in their coursework, is there chemical engineering or mechanical engineering, and starting to talk about fluids, they can go to Novel and see, well, how does the Bernoulli's equation actually operate? And they can actually solve Bernoulli's equation using the mathematical tools as part of Novel. On the other hand, as students start to move away from that coursework and start to think about things like, say, um, doing undergraduate research projects or moving into a potential doctorate or even a master's degree program, that's where they're going to have to start looking past the kind of accepted engineering research work or the accepted engineering um, you know, standards, the way that things have happened before in the past, and then move over into uh, really doing significant and new research. And that's where a tool like Engineering Village can be very powerful, right? It'll allow those students to start looking at the literature, looking at what people are actually publishing, and what new things are coming down the pipeline that hopefully someday will become part of that sort of um, body of knowledge that goes into a tool like, say, Novel. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about those kind of where we think these tools can be applied in the classroom effectively, um, where we hope that students will be at each stage in their educational journey. But really what it comes down to it, the big question here is, well, how do we actually apply these tools in the classroom or laboratory? Um, 
it's really great that we, you know, you have access to these things, but if it's not easy to apply them, um, then that's simply just not going to happen, right? Students will not necessarily seek out this content on their own, although, of course, um, some of them will do that. But so, in my mind, the three skills that we have heard consistently from our corporate clients and from professors, from people that go on to do graduate research that are really lacking in their new hires are these technical writing skills, skills around project-based learning, and also doing independent research. Those skills to actually design an experiment, um, determine the results, are they statistically relevant, and then applying them into the actual uh, workforce itself. Those are the skills that really we wanted to focus on here today. And so we're going to talk about ways that you can actually apply these digital tools of Engineering Village and Novel to, we hope, help strengthen those three skills. And we're going to start with technical writing skills. Now, one of the things that I really benefited from as a student um, and really helped me a lot in graduate school was doing independent research reports and studies as an undergraduate student. So what I mean by an independent research report, um, independent studies or these reports that come from them are long-term projects. And what they allow is for students to direct their own work, think critically and creatively, and requires them to communicate their findings either through written, written work or presentations. It can include laboratory work, of course, field work, or even industry collaboration, right? Um, so if your school has, say, a co-op program, um, have students go out there, learn about what they're going to be working on in industry, and then come back and write a report on, well, what was it that you actually did, and how does that relate to new things coming down um, the pipeline in the world of engineering research? So some project ideas or even concepts that you can consider to be giving to students to help bolster um, this skill through independent research reports or studies is doing things like a pilot plant plan um, for a new technology of interest, right? Scale up, um, a, a scale up development plan and a report. So, you know, for example, I know that AICHE um, does these, uh, does a contest every year for chemical engineering students where uh, they are tasked with designing a plant to scale up um, some technology, right? So when it was my turn as an engineering student, um, we did the production of non-alcoholic beer, um, which was extremely challenging and a really great kind of year-long project that we all worked on. Um, doing a literature review, the state of the art for a field, right? So if a student in your class is interested in nanotechnology or um, autonomous vehicles or artificial intelligence, um, tell them, okay, well, you know, we'll give you a credit uh, for doing a year-long independent study where you can write a report at the end of the year on that topic of interest and how you would do research in it, right? Or, of course, the development of a new method or product or software for a specific purpose. Um, some of the most valuable interactions I've had with undergraduate students was by allowing them to work in the lab with me and asking them, okay, well, I want to try to do this experiment why don't you go out there, read the literature, come up with an experimental plan, and then we'll review it together and start to brainstorm. Um, not only does that allow the undergraduate students to get a lot of experience in reading literature, um, but frankly, it also allows you as a graduate student or as a professor to also be very efficient in determining and devising experimental plans. Now, in terms of the tools that we actually have available here, if you want to do this sort of independent research reports or studies, um, in Novel, you can give students uh, literature sources and information flow from trusted content, right? So again, allows them to get material or system properties, allow them to collaborate on text and provide guidance or answers to students' questions with those reference texts, right? So in other words, if you know that you're your student is going to be doing a paper on um, wind energy, for example, you can find a list of resources in Novel on wind, ener wind energy that you think will be useful, provide it to those students, and then actually you both can share together a folder where you can write notes, the student can write notes and questions, and you can respond back and forth. So some of those Novel functionalities that may be of interest are topics like engineering management and leadership, case studies from various industries or projects, um, lab management guides, project man management guides and booklets, and of course, like I said before, folders to share that information and guide students along. 
Engineering Village, on the other hand, will really allow them to manage the literature sources and information flow. Again, help them find research information, um, not only from papers themselves, but also from the metadata of that paper or of those papers, right? So, for example, um, searching for a, for work on graphene, your student could then go through and basically find out, well, how has the research world of graphene changed over time? Who are the top authors? Um, what are the papers that I need to be reading if I want to be up to speed? What are the applications people are doing? All of those other things, right? So it's not just the literature itself, but it's actually also the metadata that allows you to pull uh, information out of those, out of that, say, big data set of literature that's available on Engineering Village. Um, one new tool, actually, that we just put into place uh, recently on Engineering Village in this way are in-spec analytics. Um, and that's actually what we're showing here on this slide on the right-hand side. This is the in-spec analytics page for nanosensors. And you can see here co-occurring concepts, uh, subject classifications, the organizations, journals, and conferences that are being put out there for this field. Um, all of this is very useful information for your students, especially if they want to go into graduate school, but also, frankly, if they want to maybe go to a conference or, or publish a paper in a journal um, and get the attention of industry that they want to be working for. Okay, the next topic here is project-based learning. Now, some examples here for project-based learning. What we actually mean there is um, giving students a task to think about and then allowing them to bolster those skills themselves by being independent and creative. So for example, um, these don't have to be sort of long-term projects necessarily. These can be shorter term, right? Like homework assignments. So for example here, um, a homework assignment on fatigue and fracture, right? You can ask students, what are the five most important books or journal articles related to the topic of fatigue and fracture? List them in the rank order of decreasing importance, Describe why you rank them that way. Um, and of course, in this case, there is no one right answer, right? Um, students might be looking at citation counts. Other students might be looking at, well, what papers actually led to patents, right? Which group actually made it from the lab into the actual world around us? Um, and again, you could tell students, you know, you have two valuable tools here you can use, Novel and Engineering Village. Um, give us citations here and show us and explain to me why it is you think that your answer is the correct one. This can be a very, val a very valuable exercise for students to do. Another example here would be a demonstrator assignment. So in other words, um, asking students to talk about um, a paper that they actually find. Right, so here, for example, um, the assignment might be use Engineering Village to find a journal article published within the last two years related to the design, fabrication, and testing of additively manufactured metals. Um, please choose an article that has an experimental component and give us that paper. Um, if you can contact the author and interview them about the research, you get bonus points. And then what you need to do afterwards is demonstrate for the class the major takeaways from the paper, um, what you thought about that paper, and what the experimental methodology was. Now, in this case, your student is actually going to be basically doing the sort of work they would do if they're going to go into an R&D research world, um, if they're going to be doing that task as they do work in industry, right? So again, um, not just giving them papers to read, not just show, you know, saying, hey, I want you to read this paper, tell me what you think. Letting them do the research themselves, right? Letting them learn the pitfalls, learning, letting them learn um, how hard it is to list papers of order of importance, right? How do you find an important paper? Um, how do you efficiently read literature without actually going through and reading everything, right? That's a really big, hard challenge that a lot of graduate students struggle with. Um, and so if you can give your students a leg up on how to overview, how to look at the literature and do quick overviews to see, is this paper worth my time or not? That's very valuable. Now, other skills that you can, or other ways that you can strengthen that skill through smaller assignments, right, are things like um, open-ended essay style questions on topic of interest, right? So for example, um, is direct air carbon capture feasible or not, right? And then giving students some open-ended questions. Um, what are the major institutions doing this work? What are the major companies? What are the most often researched technologies? Um, what are the important papers, right? Or again, develop a laboratory testing methodology based on a literature paper, right? So a student is interested in selenium nanoparticles. Well, okay, 
find an experimental method on the production of selenium nanoparticles and explain to me how you would do this, right? What are the techniques and technologies that are being used? Other ways to do this too is to look at things like case studies um, coming from novel, right? So for example, uh, one case study we have is on energy harvesting from ocean waves. Ask the students, well, read this case study and tell me, do you think it's feasible? Um, what other applications are there? Where are areas you think this technology might be more or less feasible, right? What are places where you think this could be applied really successfully? Um, another one, of course, too, is to provide them with equation sheets with test preparation or homework assignments, right? So again, in Novel, we have a way for you to model um, the gamma distribution, right, for statistics. So, uh, and then give them a problem statement, right? You're attempting to optimize the efficiency of a production line, um, compute the probability that you'll create 10 defective units in a 12-hour period, and then give them the different options there so that they can solve the problem on Novel using that mathematics tool, and then give you the answer, right? Another way for them to learn um, sort of quickly how to get information in a way that they're going to need to do when they get out there into industry. Okay. And finally, and, and this really is the one that I think is probably the most important skill is independent research, right? And we've, it's kind of been uh, part of everything we've talked about so far, right? But for me, the undergraduate research experience is really the most valuable thing you can do for your undergraduates to really get them ready for a career in industry or a career as a graduate student. Um, so things to consider, right? Milestones that you can get from them as they're doing undergraduate research experiences are things like presentations at those internal or lab group meetings, seminars, conferences, and poster sessions, um, reports to graduate students, or the creation of standard operating procedures, or of course the addition of students to publications for truly exemplary work. Um, in terms of undergraduate research experiences, they can do things like helping the literature review um, for PhDs or postdocs. They can do everyday laboratory tasks and optimizations, right? They can come up with, uh, they can follow rather along with a synthetic pathway to create a material. They can create devices for you or troubleshoot problems. And of course, they can do coding and general data analysis. Um, in my laboratory, um, when, I was an under, when I was a graduate student, my students um, produced for me nanomaterials. They would run through the synthetic uh, pathway for me. Um, of course, after being trained successfully, they would run through the synthetic pathway so that then I could focus on the uh, optimization of those technologies or optimization rather of the materials for the application of interest, right? So giving them everyday tasks, right? Creation of bulk materials, um, running uh, simple experiments, those sorts of things are very valuable. Now, in terms of graduate level research, of course, um, that requires a whole other level of independence and innovation. But again, as a graduate student, you can use Engineering Village to perform a quick literature review, to look at trends in your and related fields, um, find those important papers quickly, find funding partners and collaborators, and also find industry labs or groups for after graduation, right? That's something we don't really talk about a lot with graduate students is what are you going to do after you graduate? Um, and so tools like this can be very valuable, right? I know when I graduated, I had a very limited idea of even where to apply. So a tool like Engineering Village um, really would have been a godsend. Um, on the other hand, Novel can be used to learn how to run different experiments and perform analytical methods, um, see the applications of your work to industry, and of course, to obtain material and property data, equation sheets, and other information to help with project tasks and data analysis. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about those available tools for engineering education. All right, we've talked about some ways about how to apply them. We've talked a bit about the tools themselves, but let's actually get into what they look like and how they can function. So one of the main ones is Novel plus Compendex, right? So putting the two tools together that we make available. So um, if you search for something in Novel, it can also take uh, take students over to EV. So in other words, you search for something, um, you know, again, solar panel optimization or something. You search for that in Novel, and then a pop-up actually shows you here on the page and says, hey, there are actually journal articles that might be of interest for you. So you click on that, and then it brings you over to EV. Or on the other hand, the same uh, 
process, but the opposite way is possible, right? So students are using EV, and then they search for something, but a book, a piece of book content or a case study comes up, and then it'll pop them over to novel. Um, this is particularly useful because it allows you to uh, – it allows you to kind of enforce that the two tools work together. And if your school, say, has a very strong user base of novel, um, it's a nice way for you to introduce EV or vice versa. Now, again, within novel, another very powerful tool that a lot of students particularly like are the visualizations and graphs and tables. So what this actually allows you to do is things like um, search for a piece of information like a graph and then that graph is digitized in novel so that then you can actually pull out the data points yourself for use, right? Um, so for example, here, we're looking at a grade 300, um, marriaging steel, uh, fatigue life in terms of total strain graph. And so here you can actually click on those points, pull out the data itself, and then utilize it, say, in Excel or in any other you know, uh, program you want to use it for, right? Um, of course, students learning how to read these graphs is very important on their own, but being able to use a digital tool like this allows students to be more efficient in doing this work. And frankly, this is the kind of tool they're going to be using in industry as well. Again, if you are a professor or a graduate student and you want to teach a student how to do something like an equation or something else like that, you can create equation sheets in novel or share the ones that are already existent um, for homework examples, right? So um, the example here that we're showing is the ASME boiler pressure vessel code, right? So for process safety analysis, that's an area that's really not touched on very often um, until a student maybe gets to senior level design courses. However, it's going to be an extremely important piece of the work they do if they go out to industry, right? Safety concerns are paramount often. And so really need to, um, are things that really need to, uh, what's the word? Um, things that really need to be learned as they get out there into industry. But being able to show students, hey, this is how you would size a relief device, say, on your plant, um, on, a, on a water tank or a chemical reactor or whatever, um, that can be very powerful, right? Now, another thing you can do as the head of a lab or a, a, a group or even as a professor in a coursework is build reading and resource lists um, for easy sharing and collaboration. So there's a tool in Novel called My Novel. They basically allow you to save content, create folders, and also share notes, and then have those notes be editable and uh, have students be able to add notes themselves. So what this allows you to do is use that dynamic folder panel to build collections, um, easily navigate within those collections, and share those folders that you've built with others. Um, at some universities, actually what professors will do, or even library teams, what they'll do is for different classes or pieces of coursework, um, they'll have available to students, hey, this is a list of you know, 10 sections of a book or of different books that we think will be useful for the first you know, five weeks of your fluid mechanics course. Or, um, you know, this is an extra textbook that your professor wants to suggest to you um, to, to read and have available to you as you're doing work. Or if you're working in a laboratory, you know, hey, these are 10 reference works on how x-ray diffraction works. And so we want you to use these and read these pieces of content um, so that you as an undergraduate researcher know what this experimental data is actually showing you. Now, of course, these tools have all been optimized so that they will support student learning and allow them to get content as quickly and easily as possible. Um, but also, we've made this as easy as possible, we hope, for you as a professor to search and find content and share it efficiently. Right? So for example, as you run a search in novel, you can filter by concept. Um, you share links. And when you share those links, they are static links. So in other words, if you have, say, like a like Blackboard or any one of those other um, kind of course assignment or course, uh, course management systems, if you put a static link on there or if you put a link in your syllabus, say, that'll bring the students over to Novel. So long as they have access to Novel through the university, they'll be able to get to that piece of content. Um, it's not going to move. It's not going to change over time, right? So it's not... Uh, it's a nice way for you, again, to kind of manage the content that students are being given access to.
Now, another big piece of content on Novel, it's not all just sort of reference works and case studies. There is also significant material property data available. Um, and what it allows you to do is very quickly have students search for pieces of uh, information that, again, this is the kind of information they're going to be looking for as they go on into industry, but maybe it's something they haven't really done before. Um, so, for example, you know, um, you have maybe a problem in a thermodynamics course, you're calculating the temperature of a piece of steel, and you're telling students, okay, well, this is the temperature that steel will get to. Um, is that safe, right? Will the beam of the steel beam that we're raising the temperature of, um, will that collapse? Students can search for the fatigue curves um, or the stress and strain relationships or the, the modulus of elasticity, um, these other pieces of content that they'll be looking for as they're uh, working in industry, they can actually run those searches very easily in Novel. Now, we also have the Novel Data Analytics tool. Um, that currently is an implementation of the NIST Thermodynamics Databanks. Um, currently, it is for pure components. But another way for students to easily get access to this content that they'll be using in courses, say, like physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, um, or even as they move into, say, material science courses or larger, uh, later term engineering coursework. Now, another piece of tool that we've actually created that we think is very valuable for students and we've heard a lot of good things about from students are the mobile apps for tablets and smartphones. So Novel has a mobile app that you can download on um, iOS or Android. What it allows you to do is search for content directly on there, but also allows you to download books onto your phone or tablet. So what's really nice about this is, of course, um, you know, students can have this available to them, say, if they have a tablet or uh, or their phone or whatever when they're working in the laboratory. Um, it also allows them to have these books more easily, right? I know a lot of students like to use their tablets for reading papers or um, for doing homework maybe even. Um, it's a nice way for you to not just have a, a kind of digital book on a computer. You can actually use it and hold it in a way like you would say a normal ebook. So the way to use this is you register on the Novel website to obtain your login credentials, download the app from the store, and then use your login credentials on that app. And besides just being able to search for stuff on the app itself, if you find something useful in Novel and you want to save it to your phone directly from the, uh, from the browser, right, so from your computer, you can also do that. Right? There's a button that says Add to my Novel, um, but also one that says Send to uh, my mobile device, right? Send to the My Novel app. Now, we've talked a lot about some of the features that are available in Novel. Now we're going to move on to features that are available in Engineering Village. Frankly, from my perspective, the best thing about Engineering Village is the indexing itself, which allows for uh, really powerful ways for you to search the extensive and diverse information that's available. So, for example, um, you search for something like, say, rechargeable batteries in Compendex, it'll suggest to you secondary terms. Right, things like uh, secondary batteries or uh, liquid batteries or solid batteries. Um, once you've done that search, you can set up alerts to receive updates on those topics. Um, you can share those research and re share those results, the searches and records that are available from you in Engineering Village. But besides that, besides just being able to share and save those things, you can also use the facets to actually obtain further information on Engineering Village. Right, so. By faceting, what I mean is, for example, um, in Engineering Village, you can start a search very broad, right? So in other words, you can say, um, search for something like um, hydrothermal power, right? Search for something like hydrothermal power, and you're going to get, you know, a million results, say, right? You're going to get a tremendous amount of content. And instead of you having to dig through that to find the needle in the haystack, that perfect paper that is about what you want to search for, you can actually facet down the literature using the tools in Engineering Village by selecting different topics, authors, uh, the language of the, of the article, the funding sponsor, or even physical properties that are of interest for you. So, for example, in the world that I came to uh, before working at Elsevier, I was working with things like, say, zeolites and metal organic frameworks, right, nanomaterials. One of the most important properties for a nanomaterial is the surface area especially for what I was doing, which was adsorption and catalysis. I can go to Engineering Village, search for metal organic framework, 
and then I can specify the surface area of the material that I want to search for. And so what then the tool does is it searches through the abstract to find a mention of a surface area, and it will only show me papers that have that mentioned in there. I can choose a range, right? I want to be between, you know, 1,000 and 1,500. Um, I can do all of those sorts of faceting. I can do all that kind of material faceting that just isn't possible in other places. So that at the beginning of my search, I started with something very broad, right? I started with metal organic framework. But at the end of my search, the tool will allow me to really dig deep and say, I want research work from the United States on metal organic frameworks published in the last 10 years um, with funding from the NSF only with surface areas between 500 and 750 meters squared per gram. There's no other tool out there, out there that will allow you to do searches in that powerful way. And of course, once you've actually done that search, you can then output it, right? You can email that to other people. You can save that search. You can create an alert for that specific query you built. Do all those sorts of things. Okay, now finally, some content for engineering education specifically. If we're thinking about chemical engineering courses, right, so we're thinking about things like process design and safety, separations, reaction kinetics, design, etc. Some of the key resources that we think will be valuable for you on novel are things like the chemical engineering design, um, principles, practices, and economics of plant design and process design um, textbook, right? Um, the Colson and Richardson's chemical engineering uh, volume two, right? That talks about particle technology and separation processes. And of course, the thermophysical property data, right? The novel critical tables, the YAWS critical property table and YAWS data generally. Um, content from Dipper, right? So for, um, for property estimation. And also, of course, the novel steam calculators, which were just recently added based on the YAPS uh, IF97 um, equations. If any of this is of interest for you, if you're a chemical engineer, um, a professor or a librarian who deals with chemical engineering courses and professors, please do let us know. I would love to show you some of this stuff and even provide maybe some of that content for you to play around with and see um, what's available to you. Um, similarly, for mechanical and aerospace courses, right? We're talking about things like fluid dynamics, heat and mass transfer, vibrations, uh, mechanics of materials. We want to be looking at things like the elements of statics and dynamics, um, advanced engineering thermo, Peterson and stress concentration factors, um, and of course, CFD, computational fluid dynamics, right? Um, and the more than a thousand interactive equations available for the mechanical and aerospace engineering workflows. Now, if we're thinking about Engineering Village for engineering education and resource, uh, in research, rather, again, we're thinking about things like in lab courses, learning about the application of the phenomena being tested, get, getting those resources and references, finding initial papers, and coming up with discoveries related to that work that maybe are going to be down the lines in place. Um, after graduation, again, students can use these tools for finding companies performing work um, that they hopefully will want to do. Learn which graduate schools have programs doing the work that they want to perform and finding the names of potential advisors or even hiring managers. And of course, they could use this to do research projects again, right? Perform literature reviews, um, learning to do research on their own, finding papers and experimental designs and things like that. And so with that, I want to thank you all so much for your attention and your time here today. Um, I hope that this kind of whirlwind uh, survey through the tools and some of the ideas for applying them have been useful for you. Like I said, I am more than happy to uh, provide in-person demos or, well, not in-person anymore, but, uh, you know, digital demos for these tools for you, get you in touch with your customer consultant who, uh, you know, would be uh, appropriate for helping you out and getting you that information you have, um, or even just helping to brainstorm some ideas of how to apply these tools in the classroom. And with that, I'm happy to take um, any questions we have. Great. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Cogswell, for the presentation. And uh, thanks, audience, for uh, submitting questions during the presentation. And like Dr. Cogswell was saying, uh, we'll be answering them now. So if you have uh, some that you haven't had a chance to submit yet, uh, please do, and we can uh, try and get to them. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm going to start with uh, this question here that came in. Uh, it asks, does this provide support for peer review assignments? 
Really, really great question. So it can provide support for those sorts of assignments. What your students can do, for example, is check the data that the students are actually providing to them, right? Checking those resources, checking the information, um, and allowing them to really do significant peer review. And again, the same way that they would be doing um, if they were to go out there and actually become peer reviewers for, say, a journal, right? So for example, um, one example I can think of actually off the top of my head is um, we provided students with a, um, we actually had students read a book in a course that I helped teach on um, coal engineering and CO2 capture, right? So kind of the environmental effects of uh, our transition, or, or rather the environmental effects of the coal industry and then how that has affected the transition into green energy technologies. And one of the assignments there was actually giving students uh, two different research papers, one from the coal industry and one from, um, one from the EPA. And essentially, Actually, asking them to compare and contrast the sources used, and also to look at, say, um, is the data itself trustworthy that's being provided, right? Um, something similar could be done for peer review assignments. So, for example, um, students provide, uh, you know, students provide their own kind of reasoning for, you know, this is why I think this technology is feasible. And then another student um, can look through the data that's available to them on these tools and say, you know, I, well, actually, I don't agree, right? The, and these are the reasons I don't agree. Um, so in that way, it can be very powerful for not only those peer review assignments, but also for kind of class discussions, right? Um, giving students enough information and enough ability to really make their arguments very effectively. Um, but there are also content on novel for just generally like how to write effectively or how to edit effectively, right? How to um, lead projects that they're, uh, you know, the, the information you're giving to someone else is taken the way that you hope it will be, right? So uh, there's a lot of different ways that novel can help with that. It's, it's a great question though. Great. Uh, yeah, we had a, uh, some other questions that came in here. One that I wanted to ask. Um, oh, so this question asks, I'm interested in information about project-based learning. Where do I look for them in the first place? Well, that's a really good question. So um, there's a couple of different places you can kind of go for project-based learning. I guess it depends on the course that you're teaching or what you hope students will do. But in general, some very good projects that you can just assign, it, it doesn't really matter what field of engineering they're in, but you can assign things like, um, again, that question of, uh, you know, this technology is thought to be really, uh, this technology is thought to be important in the next 10 years. Tell me why or why not you think it's feasible, right? And besides that, develop a plan for scale up how would you go about doing this in an industrial setting? Um, that is a really good study for students to do. It's going to get them thinking about things that they wouldn't necessarily be thinking about in the classroom, right? things like economics, things like public sentiment, um, things like how they would actually get a technology from the lab scale to actually the industrial scale. right? Again, something they're probably not going to do otherwise until senior year, maybe, if that. So, I would actually say, in general, thinking about things like that that are kind of these basic questions um, is a really good way. Another thing, though, that you can do is look for things like those, like I said, it, uh, you know, I guess kind of project, not really projects, but I'm thinking about um, competitions to do scale up, competitions to come up with an experimental plan. Things like that, right? Those sorts of contests and, and uh, things are, are really all over the place. And so I would take a look at some of those as well. I'm happy also afterwards to provide, I mean, these slides will be provided. So um, I hope that if, if any of these are applied in the classroom, I hope uh, those some of those projects um, can be useful and interesting. But really, I think, again, the most useful way to do this um, is to really think to, about for your students what is the work they're going to be doing in industry, right? Um, if they're going to go into, say, aerospace engineering, um, one of the things that maybe we'll be worrying about is testing a component to see if it can withstand um, the forces of being in an aircraft, 
right? That's going to be an important part of what they're doing potentially. Um, so think about a project with that, right? Again, if you were a new engineer in an aerospace company, how would you test to make sure that this material can withstand those, those kinds of conditions? Um, and again, asking students to provide that research work themselves, asking them to sort of uh, build that work as it moves along themselves, right? Having them be kind of self-starters in that way can be really powerful. And we have a, a question that kind of builds on that that came in. Uh, this question says, uh, a lot of our students do co-ops or internships. Are there ways for them to use these tools to make their industrial experience more useful? Yeah, absolutely there are. So um, one thing that one thing that I really always told students to do before they went off to co-op is um, try to find research papers from the company or group even that you're going to be going to do the co-op with. Or if there aren't research papers, right, they're going to a purely industrial setting, um, read about some of that industrial engineering that goes on there, right? Read about, read about some of the technologies or techniques that they'll be doing. Um, you know, the last thing you want is for a student to go off to co-op and, you know, only get coffee or things like that. And thankfully, that doesn't really happen all that often with co-ops. Um, however, to help them get the most out of that experience, right, students can always be learning about what the team they're working on is doing. Even if they themselves aren't, you know, aren't doing the lab experiments or aren't doing that kind of work every day, um, they can learn the background of that. And then going into that same earlier question about project-based learning, um, one great question would be, you know, explain the process of this uh, facility. Right? Why did they do the things they do? How would you make it more efficient? Or what would you do to make it safer or more sustainable? Or, um, you know, how would you scale it up? Right? How would you? What would you have to do to scale this process up further? Um, those are all really good kind of standard questions that are available um, are going to be useful regardless of the engineering discipline the students are in. Um, another question that came in asks. How will I find potential senior design topics for a capstone final course? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so I suppose it depends on – so, okay, one thing that I would do to find those capstone projects, actually, is I would go through um, – I would say search in novel for things like um, – case studies, right? Novel has a, a, a large amount of case studies um, that are coming from industry talking about problems that they had, right? So I would be looking at those case studies to see, is there something interesting there, right? The one that I discussed earlier in the presentation was on hydrothermal power. And, um, you know, that might be a great senior design project, right? Design a hydrothermal plant <laughs> for a, for a, environmental engineer or a, uh, a chemical engineer or an electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, you know, there are aspects to that that are useful um, and going to be interesting regardless of that engineering discipline really, right? But so I would be looking at case studies and I would also be looking, frankly, at um, there are actually, uh, again, institutions and places that have done a lot of senior design projects already in history, right? So if you just search um, for senior design projects, you're going to find a lot of different topics. Um, really good question. Um, another question asks, how can students access resources from home in a remote learning environment? Yeah, a great question, especially now that we are all working from home. So um, Engineering Village and Novel, both of those tools, students are able to actually to access um, they're able to access from home, right? So like with other library resources from your university, um, they would either have to be logged in via a VPN or already have a login. So, um, but once those are set up, they can access these tools. Um, again, access the tools from home and be able to get access to these pieces of content. Um, so long as they have an internet connection and uh, a way to verify that it is them, they will be able to get access. Um, Novel has a little bit of a different access methodology whereby once they log in, they're kind of verified for a couple of weeks, so they won't necessarily even need to have an internet connection. Well, they need an internet connection, but not necessarily a VPN connection. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a great question. So that's, that's the way that they would be able to get that. Uh, 
someone else asks, is there any content that contains video demonstrations that can be used to support lab classwork? Oh, that's such a good question. It's one that I really, I, it's okay. There is not currently, um, there are not currently video demonstrations available for lab classwork. However, there is a lot of content in, say, Novel, um, or even, say, in Engineering Village that will help students with that lab work. So, um, you know, discussions of how the experiment actually occurred, uh, pitfalls, things like that, those are available. Um, the video is a great idea, though, and something that I think we will be thinking about potentially. Um, but I, I, I love the idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, another question asks, how can I get access to Engineering Village? Yeah, so if you're interested in getting access to these tools, um, when you, if you want to demo them, if you just want to see uh, an actual demonstration of the product with, with one of our uh, people kind of you know driving or even allowing you to drive there on the tool, please do contact us. Um, my contact info will be shared after this event, I'm sure. But um, yeah, please do feel free to reach out to us and we would be uh, really happy to help you uh, either think about how to get access to it or how to demo it for your uh, university or your lab group or, or wherever. Um, another question asks, do you have a similar product for pure sciences, chemistry in particular? Oh yeah, really good question. So we do, so Elsevier has obviously, um, you know, the kind of breadth of content that we cover is pretty vast. So we do have a tool that's specifically for chemistry, um, and we do have another tool similar to Engineering Village that looks at the broader world of research, right? It doesn't just look at engineering, but it looks at the sciences. Um, I'm happy to share that info with you after this. Um, the tool for, the, for chemistry is Reaxis, and the tool for kind of the broader sciences is Scopus. Um, but there's also, of course, you know, um, there's also, of course, Science Direct and, you know, the, the access to our journals and things like that. So, but yeah, really, really good question. Um, that being said, though, uh, I would not, I would not say that Novel or Engineering Village aren't useful for chemistry coursework. Um, they actually can be very useful, especially Novel, which allows you, again, to get that material property data, has a lot of really good content in there on chemistry, um, you know. Chemical engineering isn't chemistry, but there's a lot of chemistry uh, required to do it. <laughs> oh, great. Well, we're um, upon the top of the hour, so I think we're going to wrap up. For those who submitted questions that we weren't able to uh, get to, um, you will be followed up with after this webinar, so uh, please don't worry about that. Um, I want to say uh, thanks again to Dr. Cogswell for your fascinating presentation. Thank you, participants, for being a great audience. Be sure to check CNEN or CNEN online for information on the next edition of CNEN webinars. Thank you, On24, for technology and production services. And thank you, Elsevier, for the sponsorship that made this interactive webcast possible. For CNEN webinars, I'm Jeff Huber. I hope everybody has a great day.